so mates. Thanks so much for allowing us to bring you today's news. We appreciate you so much. It's all about this Wednesday, December 14th. Want to welcome you to Fox Souls Black Report. I'm Courtney Hicks. And I'm Nicole Delia Corte. We are honored to stand behind this desk each day to take you on a journey across Black America and the stories that impact our people. That's right. We're going to bring you our news, our views, and our voice. And we begin with some breaking news today, some heartbreaking news. We are following the death of Stephen Ross. You might know him uh, as Twitch. TMZ is reporting his death as a suicide. His wife, Allison Holker, boss, confirmed his passing in a statement to People magazine. Twitch gained uh, fame on the show. Uh, so you think you can dance. He then became a judge on that show. He later went on to DJ and executive produce the Ellen DeGeneres show. He appeared in several movies, including Magic Mike and the Step Up franchise. Twitch leaves behind a wife and three children. He was only 40. If you or a loved one is struggling with thoughts of suicide, the National Suicide Hotline is available. Just dial 988. A viral TikTok challenge is one family mourning the death of their 12-year-old. Now the social media platform is removing content related to the challenge. Tristan Casson took the blackout challenge from TikTok where participants try to make themselves pass out by holding their breath or otherwise cutting off their air supply. The boy's mother, Taylor Davis, said her, her other sons found Tristan unresponsive in his bedroom and FaceTimed her to report what they found. She was just down the street from home and called the police. Davis insists that her son was not suicidal and that his strangulation death was the result of the attempting uh, online trend. Uh, she said that Tristan always followed new dances and trends popular on TikTok. Davis said her son, who was in the sixth grade, had a bright future. And he was the first person at his middle school to obtain a license to fly a drone. An unfortunate update to a developing story. The student who disappeared the night before his graduation from the University of Memphis has been found dead. Police say Barche Wilson's body was found near the Arlington water treatment plant beneath leaves and tree limbs. Witnesses also telling officers that a buried car, excuse me, a burned car was found yards away from his body. Wilson's mother says that her 25 year old son uh, said he was going to a party later that night. She got a call from a friend who said that Wilson left her house and never returned. Wilson was supposed to graduate from the University of Memphis on this past Sunday with the Bachelor of Science degree. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you updates. Just a heartbreaking few stories that we had to, you know, put out there, uh, especially during this holiday mm -hmm. season. It just reminds us to uh, be mindful, stay safe, uh, check in with your loved ones. Um, sometimes it's just hard to determine what's happening when you take a look at uh, Twitch's uh, account just a, a couple of days ago. Him and his wife are very infamous for, um, you know, doing dance routines and posting constantly family um, gatherings and things of that nature. So it's just uh, very heartbreaking to see that. Yeah. To about it. Yeah. I mean, I woke up this morning to a flurry of text messages from friends, uh, you know, really highlighting the uh, the heartbreaking death of mm -hmm. Stephen Boss mm -hmm. of Twitch, uh, an, an issue that hits very close to home. I've lost a, a brother uh, to suicide, and uh, it's it's never easy. Uh, the lives of everybody involved will never ever be the same. But you know, I just want to underscore a point that you just made. It's so important that people, um, you know, take the time to to pay attention, you know, to mm -hmm. uh, you know people's patterns and pay attention to. Um, what may be happening in their lives. You know, people aren't always going to telegraph that on social media right. or, you know, sometimes even in person. But, you know, it's important that we all operate with kindness and, you know, we all allow ourselves to, to be a safe place for people to share uh, some things that uh, we may or may not know that they're going through. Mm -hmm. I like to say tap in. Absolutely. Yeah. All Absolutely. Right. Police in St. Louis are investigating after a KFC employee said a customer shot him because he was angry. The restaurant was out of corn. Can you believe this? Officers say they responded to a hospital where the 25 year old male employee had been privately driven after being shot in the abdomen. Police say investigators also say the shooting suspect attempted to place a drive through order when he became upset and threatened employees when he 
was told they were out of corn. Now, the report says the man had a handgun when he drove up to the drive through window. The injured employee who went outside to talk to the driver returned to the restaurant and said that he had been shot. Police are still searching for the shooter. The employee is recovering in critical but stable condition. A man from Saginaw will await his fate after he pleaded guilty to hate crimes for intimidating and attempting to intimidate people who were speaking out and protesting in support of Black Lives Matter. 61-year-old Kenneth Pallon entered the plea to two hate crimes, two hate crime charges in federal district court. Pallon was accused of calling nine Starbucks stores in Michigan and telling the employees answering his calls to relay racial threats to Starbucks employees wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts. Pallon also threatened to kill black people according to court documents. Pallon is due to be sentenced on March 23rd, 2023. And President Biden is hosting a 50 hosting 50 leaders from Africa in Washington this week for a high profile summit seeking to foster future relations with the continent and counter Chinese and Russian influence. It is the first time since 2014 the White House will host a summit with African leaders as the Biden administration seeks greater collaboration on trade investments elections and climate change. The U.S. Africa summit comes while some African nations refuse to take a stance against Russia amid concerns over global food security during the war in Ukraine and as part of Biden's ongoing efforts to strengthen democracies abroad. Now, experts believe Biden's greatest challenge will be proving to African leaders that the U.S. can be a reliable long term partner for a fast growing continent. And speaking of the summit, while a significant majority of African nations joined the summit this week, five were not invited. A senior White House official this week said that four of those countries, Guinea, Sudan, Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, have changed their, government, uh, their governments unconstitutionally and were suspended from the African Union. Here are the five African nations that weren't invited to Biden's summit. Again, they were Guinea, Sudan, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Eritrea. So some, some got the invite and some didn't, you know, based on the politics, based on uh, the willingness to cooperate, and also on, on some of the political history. Well, this is also a pro-democracy administration. Mm -hmm. And for folks that are changing their constitution all nilly-willy, really it's doing it work. unconstitutionally, um, it would be, you know, sort of hypocritical for the administration to extend an invitation to them, um, while there are plenty of other countries uh, in Africa, plenty of other countries that are part of the African Union, um, that are not changing their constitution nilly-willy. Mm -hmm. And so um, maybe next time, you know, they'll, uh, they'll think before they do that if they want to be a part of uh, this uh, summit of, of African nations that are um, uh, working together to advance democracy. Yeah, they're going to have to get on board, at least if they want to uh, hang out with America. That, that's what it boils down Certainly to. Certainly the Biden administration. That's right. Speaking of yeah. uh, which, love wins as President Biden is has signed the Respect for Marriage Act requiring the federal government to recognize same-sex marriages performed in states where they are legal. Now, the law requires that interracial marriage and same-sex marriage must be recognized as legal in every state in the nation. The bill was passed with a 250 to 169 vote in the House and a 61 to 36 vote in the Senate. The president uh, showing off the bill before officially signing it into law. New, a New Orleans-based federal magistrate judge has been confirmed by the Senate to serve on the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Dana Douglas was confirmed Monday. She was nominated to the appeals court by President Joe Biden in June to replace Judge James Dennis, who's retiring as an active judge, to take senior status on the court. Meanwhile, he will have a reduced workload. Democratic U.S. Representative Troy Carter of New Orleans hailed what he called Douglas's historic appointment as the first black woman on the New Orleans-based federal appeals court. The vote to confirm Douglas was 65 to 31. 
and a former Spirit Airlines flight attendant is suing her former employer in court, in federal court that is, claiming she was fired for being overweight and wasn't given the same opportunity to lose weight as a white co-worker. Now the suit states Chelsea Blackman was unable to fasten the seat belt for the jump seat on one of Spirit, planes, uh, Spirit Airlines planes back in September of 2021, forcing her to exit the plane. Spirit then gave Blackman between September 3rd to October 3rd to lose weight so she could fit in the jump seat. Blackman was fired on November 3rd of 2021. She cited a white colleague at Spirit who she says also couldn't fit into the jump seat due to her size and weight, but was given, quote, several months to lose uh, the weight. Blackman was given a little more than about a month. Eh, I don't know. I know that, you know, you, you know, you're required to, <laughs> to be able to, you know, fit in, in the jump seats uh, as far as safety uh, is concerned. I know when it comes to passengers, uh, sometimes people have to double up their seats or ask for uh, an extender. So I can see that same sort of kind of policy, if you will, to, you know, spill over into, you know, workers needing to be able to get into those very tight uh, spaces. And so, um, I don't know, I, I, you know, that's going to be up to the court of, of opinion and we'll just have to, I'm going to be anxious to follow this story. I know, you know, women of color, you know, we have a tendency to be a little, you know, on the curvy side. And, and so I don't know if it's, if it's discrimination or does she really need to, to come down um, with her weight? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, different, know. different jobs have different requirements. Mm -hmm. If you're a firefighter, if you're a police officer, right? I mean, these are jobs that require folks to, to have a certain level of physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, certainly, you know, if, if, if there are requirements that are, you know, stated up front, um, and if folks don't fit those requirements, then as long as there's a cure period mm -hmm. for people to, you know, lose the weight or to get fit, enough to be able to do the job, yeah. then, um, you know, there shouldn't be a problem with that. But if she is either unwilling or unable to do yeah. that, you know, then maybe there are other job opportunities for her within Spirit yeah. Airlines. I, I, it just might not be as a, a flight attendant. I, but I want to say, you know, those requirements, I'm, I'm assuming, are, are given up front. I applied back in my day. I applied um, for a particular airline. And back then, I was like 160, I'm 5'3 on a good day. And they were like, oh, no. And yeah. to, to me, that was 20 some odd pounds ago. And that was very, there was very small in my opinion. Um, so I, I don't know, that's a fine line between what is required and discrimination. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in federal court. They yeah. told me no. Well. It was one of those hoity-toity international airlines uh -huh. that you, you know you wear the hat and the mm -hmm, you can figure it out I don't want to put it out there but <laughs> well it's yeah. halfway they, out they there. go for a very particular <laughs> look and I just did not fit that uh-huh yeah and I'm hoping it was size and not and not skin color yeah. now that I think back on it you know what I'm saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well we'll continue to keep our eye on this and see what happens um, now uh, off to Philadelphia where the school district of Philadelphia is hiring teachers that want quality and diversity, uh, but the competition is stiff. Jeff Cole has the very latest. Make sure you're following along. The lesson in Takiya McClendon's class of 22 fourth graders in North Philly's Bethune Elementary is energy supply. The students are anxious to take part. McClendon, 34, thinks just her presence is important. I also grew up in the school district of Philadelphia as a native, and I didn't always have teachers that looked like me, so I didn't even think all the time that I could be a teacher. And for the early part of her career, she wasn't. An apparel buyer for running stores, she wanted something more fulfilling. Last January, she began teaching math, science, and health at Bethune, a pre-K through eighth grade school of 478 students, all of them of color. I think people overthink what skills they can bring into the classroom. And I think now more than ever, the kids in the city really need adults to look up to. McClendon is exactly what the school district wants in a teacher, enthusiastic and able to connect Tuesday. And the district opened its yearly drive to hire more just like her. We need teachers 
We need qualified, highly qualified teachers. We need a diversified workforce that look like the children of Philadelphia. There are some 8,500 teachers in the Philly public schools. Most are female and white. The district offers incentives to pull in candidates and is allowing 25 schools to offer jobs immediately. We are not going to let the fact that we're the largest poor city deter us from going after the very best teachers. Starting salary is 50 grand a year, rising to a peak of 99,000. Nearby Montgomery County starts teachers in a range from 45,500 to just over 60 grand. Pay is important, says McClendon, but there's more. The murder rate, the violence, um, the poverty, a lot of things that are happening in the city right now. We need to make sure that we're preparing the kids for the future. The superintendent for the district says if they want more teachers, they'll have to pay more. Uh, and I don't disagree with this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she just laid it out really well that you know, these are teachers that are expected to educate students in an environment where mm -hmm. there's so much happening, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, related to, uh, you know, kids trying to overcome, you know, some of, you know, the, the tough currents of poverty, mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to uh, keep them safe in neighborhoods where uh, there has been an uptick in violence. Um, and, you know, trying to make sure that uh, after school, you know, that they have something productive to do and that they're not getting, you know, caught up uh, in, in things that uh, uh, are not good for them. Uh, and so there's a lot that, that teachers have to do, not just in Philadelphia, but across we see this board. in, in yeah. major cities across the country, mm -hmm. uh, that cities, that, that teachers are on the front, the first line of defense. They're the first line of defense. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we should treat them as such. We should pay them as such. And, and still, uh, to this day, right around, you know, school time, you'll see teachers, you know, in the stores coming out of their own pockets mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, school supplies are covered or to meet where uh, maybe school boards are falling short or to just make sure that you know they have things in their classrooms that they know uh, they're going to utilize in order to better teach uh, their students to sort of kind of compensate or make up for uh, what is not um, supplied and so you know it's it's a big huge task it's it's more than reading writing and arithmetic it is a it is a holistic approach that you're having to take now uh, as a teacher that I still believe is 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 under appreciated and uh, underpaid even after a pandemic when a lot of parents had to you know step in as the role of the teacher and really got an up close and personal perspective on how challenging it could it could absolutely be I mean I feel like I've got friends with kids and and they were trying to figure out division like we didn't do division like this what what is this so it's very challenging and you would think that's a really good point that you raise you, you would think that coming off of the darkest days of the pandemic where so many parents you know were, were wearing you know double hats that's right. triple hats they were a cafeteria worker they were teacher they and were parent, so right? frustrated and so you would think that there would be a lot more sympathy that's right. you know for what teachers you know um, have to go through in order to educate our kids yeah all right coming up I don't know about this, Indiana, but it uh, looks like you're going to take the cake for hate crimes. Mm -hmm. Learn the latest stats after the break. You're watching Fox Souls Black Report.